Mike in Washington, welcome to the show. How you doing today? Hey, how you doing? Um, Jim, I love your work. And know it. Sorry, I don't know who else is on the show with Rudy. you, but uh, I like your the Rudy. Okay, nice. I uh, I'll, um, nice to meet you. Um, but yeah, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about death and kind of loss, um, generally in the secular community and how we may handle it. Um, and this is kind of counterpunctual to maybe the kind of you know how some theists. Uh, view it. Um, I, I currently just lost my grandfather, who's largely oh, kind of the work of my. Yeah, thanks. No worries. Um, but he's been kind of this like tour de force in our family for um, ever since my mom's mother died when they were very young. So everyone's been very, you know, he's been kind of the pillar. Um, and he just died. Most of my family's Catholic or kind of Catholic light. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, but they, you know, they would, they, they'd call them themselves Catholics. Um, and I've just noticed a really difference in the way that I've responded to his death. Um, me being kind of an atheist, I'm, I'm pretty out in my family and everyone's like pretty chill with it. So I'm fortunate for that. Um, but I've noticed that my atheism, um, has helped me really kind of have excellent relationships with people in my life. Um, because I'm, I don't, expect anything more, right? I, I, I kind of expect that this is it. Um, and any other interaction that I have with someone is kind of like icing on the cake every day, you know, with my wife, right. You know, I could, I could get hit by a car today. I could be dead, but I I'll get another day with my wife. And I try to make it as good as possible. Cause again, who knows, who knows what's going to happen. Um, and that in my kind of daily life or interactions with people, it's like, you know, if I don't see my grandfather for a while, I'll call him. Or if there's kind of a big event and everyone's kind of, you know, whooping it up or, you know, having some beers, but he's not really, you know, no one's really talking to him or whatever. I'll go over and sit down with him because, again, you know, who knows? Um, And that's really allowed me to be confident in my relationship with him and the interactions that I had with him that I I didn't leave anything on the table. Uh, And I just know that some of the other people in my family um, who are in a theist um, are really broken up. They really feel like this really deep sense of regret that they wish that they could have, um, you know, done more. Um, and, you know, that, that may not that be directly re- related to their, to their theism, but I just know that atheism for me personally has just been this really strong motivating force. Um, and I just kind of wanted atheists to, to hear that. Um, that are maybe going through something similar or, or potentially going to go through something similar in the future. And, and I want to be a student of that because I, I, I think um, they don't get, they, they maybe not be able to see how, how we deal with death. And I think it, it's really positive. I, I really celebrate life and I think death is a part of it and I'm okay. Yeah. With that. So um, yeah. yeah, I actually had something very similar. Uh, when I was a theist, my grandfather died and um it was unfortunately due to cancer. So it was a slow and pretty, uh, pretty shitty way for it to happen. But all of the family had time to, you know, get their affairs in order and adjust to the idea that he wasn't going to be there before it actually happened, before he actually passed. But I struggled a lot with the idea that I would see him again, but only under certain conditions of the way that I lived my life moving forward. And that was one of the things that kept me in religion for as long as I was there. Um, And when I kind of, when I did eventually deconvert, it was a huge weight off my shoulders. Like I immediately felt so much better about the idea of my grandfather because I knew that I had made my peace with him. I knew that everybody in the family had said what they needed to say. And that, you know, he wasn't watching over me or judging me or anything like that. He wasn't hoping that I would make certain decisions or anything like that. I just thought, I think my grandfather would want me to be happy. And no offense, but he doesn't really get a a say in what that means for me. You know, but ultimately, I'd like to think that he would want me to be happy. And so it was a lot easier to deal with that idea of him than it had been when I was still holding on to these religious ideas. And I was 
pretty sure that I was going to like be damned. I was going to like die in Armageddon, you know? So it was, uh, I guess for, for me, at least I would certainly agree that uh, being an atheist made death a lot easier for me to cope with. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. It dealing with what is, um, is really, really important. But I think too, a lot of people have, you know, a lot of atheists will have a hard time with a lot of the platitudes that Christians say. And I think part of, of dealing with that is just recognizing that when they say things like, you know, he'll, he's in heaven, he's not suffering now, he's in a better place, all those things that they say are really ways with them trying to deal with the same grief that you are. Um, and just because you disagree that they're in heaven doesn't mean that we as atheists can't have some empathy for the fact that that our Christians are dealing with this as well. And to treat this not as a tax on our atheism, but rather exactly what they are, platitudes to make everybody feel better. Um, and so that's also a, a, a part of that atheist theist interaction that we have to have. And it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, I'm sure Buddhists and other religions have the, the same type of pl different platitudes, but still platitudes that they say to help them deal with it. Um, but yeah, I think dealing with, with reality as it is, is recognizing that, you know, uh, we are going to die, um, and that we should take care of things now while we have the, the moment because tomorrow is not promised. Um, there's a, a stoic philosophy, memento more, um, remember you will die. And there's a, a, a myth that, that Caesar, Julius Caesar, um, had a slave who would follow along behind him. Um, on parades and other places where he was out among the, the the population, just saying that over and over to him so that he wouldn't let that go to his head. Um, so that is kind of, you know, it is important to recognize that death is the thing that's going to happen. And we should deal with that before. And I think a lot of Christians think that, oh, I don't have to, to deal with the fact that my grandfather is getting older because I'll see him in heaven. I can talk to him then. And then you realize that maybe it's too late. So, Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you're. I think, yeah, I think you're. I think you're all. I think we're all kind of on the. You know, just hitting the same points. Um, yeah, I just want to again just call in and, and just say to anyone out there that's feeling, you know, or going through something similar. One, you're not alone. Um, you know, just remember that person, or you know, call them, or even if you're not going through it, just you know, call someone you haven't called for a while. I know we're all kind of going through, you know, COVID and in death, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, salient in our minds right now. So, um, yeah, that's all I had for you guys. Um, and I just want to have, say, have a uh, good rest of your day and a uh, good start to your week. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Bye. Okay. Heavy topic starting off. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> very heavy. And I, I think, I was watching in chat people talking about some of the, the, the things that Thea said. I think we also have to remember that they, the, not everything a theist says is an attack on, on us as atheists. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's just a, uh, it, it's just a platitude. It's just something you say. Yeah. Um, I, I would never take offense to somebody telling me, you know, that a lost loved one is in a better place. Cause in my mind, it's like, well, you know, not, you know, being immobile in bed with painful cancer versus nothing at all. I guess that is still a better place. I'm, it's not the one you're thinking of, but I appreciate the sentiment all the right. same. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And that's also another good reason to go talk to your moms and, and have good conversations and try to stay on their good side and have those conversations um, until they become toxic because that happens yeah. too.